the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution supersedes state laws. And so you can't just use any kind of state law to stop a peaceful protest. 57 people found themselves behind bars after being arrested at a pro-Palestine protest on UT's campus Wednesday. The Travis County Attorney's Office say all charges against everyone arrested have been dropped due to lack of sufficient probable cause. There's no notice that they shouldn't be trespassing there because most of these affidavits probably all follow the same formula. If there was a defect in one of them, it's, there's going to be a defect in all of them. Texas Republican Senator Brandon Creighton applauded the response from state law enforcement on X, saying Texas does not tolerate terrorist sympathizers. On the day of the Palestine protest, Governor Greg Abbott also posted on X, saying arrests would be made until the crowd dispersed and added protesters belonged in jail. Some Jewish counter protesters on campus echoed those sentiments, applauding arrests made at the university. The amount of police on campus, the amount of of attention to, to danger. I felt so safe. But other students disagree, saying the response was a violation to their free speech on campus. The police response to this has been unnecessarily violent towards a peaceful protest. The American Civil Liberties Union says the First Amendment protects the rights of protesters. In 2019, Governor Abbott signed into law a bill that designates all of the public common areas of Texas public universities as traditional public forums for free speech. That means that the free speech rights of all Texans are at their apex. In order to disperse in this traditional public forum that is designated for free speech is highly unusual and constitutionally very suspect. Most of the arrest affidavits obtained by CBS Austin credit the arrests made for failure to disperse. Founder of ATX Legal Rob Chestnut says there was a lack of evidence of a crime being committed beyond a reasonable doubt. In this case, the judge determined that the officers were incorrect and that there were, was not actually probable cause for the arrest. Over the course of its history and even up to this week with chaotic protests, UT Austin has prided itself on its free speech policies. But as we saw this week, the university has limits on those free speech policies, and much of that may come down to the state government. <laughs> Dozens of UT Austin protesters out of jail tonight, <laughs> with charges of criminal trespass against them dropped by the county attorney. But they may still not be allowed on UT property to demonstrate, based on a new handout of rules shared by the university. Those rules bar individuals from doing things like wearing masks or disguises, camp on university property, or perhaps most importantly, the list includes a rule that blocks individuals from coming to campus without authorization, including instances where a person is subject to a criminal trespass warning or arrested for criminal trespass. Doing so could result in a rearrest. In other words, that could mean that the 57 people arrested on Wednesday, most of whom were students and one of whom was a journalist, may not be allowed back on campus despite the drop charges. That comes on the heels of allegations of curbing access to freedom of speech by the university, which has historically prided its free speech policies. This video from the university a few months ago has made the rounds on social media this week. So state law in Texas actually allows uh, members of the public, just like our university community, to come onto campus and use our common outdoor areas for speech activity. But that's protected by state law and members of the public, just like university community, can use our common outdoor areas. Now, it isn't a free-for-all. From the river to the sea! One of those caveats Cochran McCall said at the time was being subject to university rules like these ones now being enforced. Add to that pressure from the state government. Just last month, Governor Greg Abbott ordered public universities to reevaluate their free speech policies, including specifically targeting anti-Semitism and naming the Palestine Solidarity Committee as a potential target for discipline. That's one of the groups behind this week's protests and now suspended by the university. Universities have long been a target of, of Republican executives and Republican legislatures because of the perception that the faculty in particular, but in many cases, the administration has a liberal uh, direction and policy preference. And in that order, Abbott requires all public universities to make a report to his office showing exactly how they're revising their free speech policies. And new today, we're learning that the university itself may have been the one to specifically request DPS assistance to respond to these demonstrations. Democratic State Senator Sarah Eckhart's office confirms to me that she spoke with UT President Jay Hartzell, who says that it was the university that requested that assistance from the Department of Public Safety. At UT Austin, Michael Atkinson, CBS Austin News. This statement was sent out by UT President Jay Hartzell last night. In it, he calls what has happened over the past two days challenging. 
57 arrests were made on the UT Austin campus Wednesday during a pro-Palestine protest. President Hartzell says the decision was made to bring DPS troopers on campus because protesters were trying to deliver on their stated intent to occupy campus. The email states, the university's decision to not allow Wednesday's event to go as planned was made because we had credible indications that the event's organizers, whether national or local, were trying to follow the pattern we see elsewhere, using the apparatus of free speech and expression to severely disrupt a campus for a long period. <laughs> UT Austin says 26 of the 55 arrested protesters are not affiliated with the university. Today, the UT president is continuing to face backlash for using state troopers to stop the student protest. This post on X from the UT Austin chapter of the American Association of University Professors says they are circulating an open letter intended to gauge support for a vote of no confidence in UT President Jay Hartzell. Last I checked, over 100 faculty had signed the letter, and that's circulating and gathering more interest. University Professor Alita Perrine is a safety monitor at today's campus gathering. She says Hartzell needs to start listening to student demands to divest from companies manufacturing weapons for Israel. The email was completely inadequate. It was empty. It didn't justify at all the actions that were taken here on Wednesday. Jewish students on the UT campus disagree and say Wednesday's show of force made them feel safer. Nobody wants to walk on campus and hear hate speech on their way to class. Caroline Ginsburg is a Jewish student and says Hartzell is doing what he can to help students get through the final days of the semester and prepare for finals. We've seen what's been going on at all these uni other universities and how disruptive everything's been and I think he's just trying to, you know, make that end of the year as run as smoothly as possible. The latest numbers from the AAUP show 200 faculty now say they have lost confidence in President Hartzell. UT Austin says it currently has 3,000 teaching faculty. Betty Cross, CBS Austin News. We are a peaceful movement. We are a peaceful uh, organization. UT Austin junior Amr Kadumi is a member of the Palestine Solidarity Committee that was placed on interim suspension yesterday by the university administration. This, a day after several arrests were made at a protest the PSC hosted in support for Palestine. We believe the suspension is based on uh, you know, a complete mischaracterization of us as an organization and of our uh, event, our peaceful demonstration that we had planned for Wednesday, uh, which turned into a mass arrest, uh, an abuse of power. According to a spokesperson for the university, the PSC is on interim suspension based on an alleged violation of institutional rules based on the student conduct and integrity. But the university failed to clarify which offenses happened. The suspension, however, means the PSC can't host any events on campus, nor reserve any rooms or work with faculty. Yeah, you know, as a student body, I think we're disappointed, but not surprised by the administration. Hottie is a junior student at UT and supports PSC. He says the suspension of PSC is unacceptable. Because truly, um, they've done nothing but help the community on campus and by allowing students to organize and to let their voices be heard, which is the goal of the, pro of the protests that have happened for the last, you know, three days. Kadumi insists that every gathering hosted by the PSC have been peaceful, even the ones this week held on Wednesday and Thursday. There's never been, there's, there's never been a case where, where we have been urging the crowd on, uh, urging the crowd to, to do anything violent or rash uh, to, to try to provoke police. It was extremely disturbing to see. What we saw was seemingly peaceful protesters exercising their First Amendment rights. For some reason, you know, the governor felt it necessary to call in uh, state troopers in riot gear to quell what seemed to be a very peaceful protest. What started as a peaceful protest organized by the UT student group Palestine Solidarity Committee would erupt into complete chaos. Hundreds of members of several law enforcement agencies overtook the campus and 57 arrests were made, including multiple UT students for criminal trespass. I still don't understand why these protesters were met with the response that they were met with. Why were they met with, with, with the type of force they were met with? Why was DPS involved? Why was UTPD you know, out here? Why was 
you know, it, you know, why was APD involved in, in the manners that they were involved? Some of the students arrested spoke to CBS Austin Thursday. One said the zip ties used to restrain her were too tight, injuring her arms. She also said an officer knelt on her back during the arrest despite her getting on the ground voluntarily and not resisting. What we saw was an excessive and flagrant use of force. The same day of the protest, UT President Jay Hartzell released a statement defending his decision to bring in law enforcement agencies on campus, stating that the Palestine Solidarity Committee had threatened to occupy the campus. Thursday, all of the protesters arrested were released from the Travis County Jail and charges would be dropped. That is the system working, right? So uh, I'm very encouraged to see that our county attorney, Delia Garza, uh, did drop those charges because they didn't see to be appropriate. A planned protest at UT on Thursday against the state mandated diversity, equity and inclusion ban was canceled and another, albeit much calmer, pro-Palestine protest took place. Also on Thursday, several faculty members and students called for the removal of Hartzell and noted that they were putting forward a statement of no confidence in UT's president. The UT community needs to decide what should and shouldn't have happened and figure out what uh, what broke down and, and what didn't quite uh, meet the public's expectation. And, you know, the president is ultimately the one who is in charge and responsible. And so it's my hope that he will use this as a learning lesson. Friday, UT suspended the Palestine Solidarity Committee, citing an alleged violation of institutional rules. The university also handed out a letter stating that anyone who was warned or arrested for criminal trespass could be arrested or rearrested if they returned to campus, but said it's an interim action, which means they'd still be allowed on campus for academic reasons and could still access university resources with approval. Thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and get the latest news by downloading the CBS Austin News app.